Hello Kevin, this is hopefully going to help you figure out what's going on with your rear defroster. Just one thing I wanted to note, and this is actually a relay for the wiper wash control. I just wanted to note, you can see the, the perforated dots around things like fuses. This is the junction box control module, and uh, this is the relay for wipe and washing. You see it actually has the dots around it, that means that the component is replaceable separate from the component it's actually plugged into. And that's important unfortunately for your situation. This is the diagram for the rear defogger defroster on your BMW 3 Series E90. You were saying that you're not getting power right here. And I printed it out as well to make it easier to see. But that's fuse 46 and you're saying you're not getting power on each side of the fuse. And the reason why is, this is the relay for the activation. So you're not going to get power here unless this relay is activated. This is the working side of the relay right here. This is the module called the junction box electronics. This larger component here is called the junction box. And the junction box is basically the fuse panel which is behind the glove box. Now one of the important things to look at here is that it has the perforated box around the fuse which you don't have power on. It has the perforated box around the junction box electronics. This is actually what turns on that relay right here. We do not have a perforated box around the K19 relay. Oh, K13. That's a 13. So that means that this relay right here is not replaceable from the junction box itself. So this relay is actually built into that entire fuse panel, that junction box they call it. Basically how this system would work is this is your heating and air conditioning system, which is a processor. This also is a processor. When you select that button and all the parameters are met, it vehicle on enough voltage, it's going to send the signal to the junction box, which junction box is going to then ground out the circuit, which is going to close the relay right here on this side right here. This is the working side. That's the only time that you're going to show power here. So because you're not getting power here, your relay is not activating. Power is sent down through here. This is a lockout circuit, um, which I believe is like a trap circuit for noise suppression. And then right here, this is actually the rear window, which is just an element in the rear window that gets power, and then your ground is further down. This is what the fuse panel looks like. Down here is where the junction box is located. This is the K13 relay, which if you looked in your um, at your junction box, you're probably going to just see maybe a cover there. It's not it's not showing as replaceable. You can take a look. There's a larger relay in this location, a large black one. That's actually going to be a 30G relay, which powers things like your radio and some other components. So that's not going to be the, the relay that you need to replace. That relay that uh, you're looking for is actually not replaceable. Now you told me that you had the recall performed. Now the recall is removing the entire junction box and on the very bottom corner there's the main power feed that goes in and a section of that cable is actually cut out and then a new connector is put on and the issue there is with a hot spot that develops causing a voltage drop to the fuse panel. Now they would have had to disturb the junction box to do that repair on your particular vehicle so I would definitely be going back to the dealer that did the repair and talk to them about this because it actually could be related to the repair that they did. And there's a couple of things that I've run into. One would be on the back side over here. On the back side of the junction box are some additional connectors where the wire actually plugs in. If this is not fully seated, power could still be being transferred, but it's actually not going to get to where it needs to get. So they need to double check the connections on the back of the junction box. They need to make sure all the fuses are pushed in all the way. 
That's something I've seen before where the fuses actually get pushed out when each little fuse pack connector is installed. Hopefully it has to do with uh, a poor connection on the back of the junction box and then you should be up and running pretty quickly once they get that uh, part and double checked. Um, if it's not that, then you're looking at potentially it being, I would imagine, three different components. It could be your heater air conditioning control units not sending the correct signal to the junction box electronics, or it could be the junction box electronics which is not grounding the circuit, which is then activating the relay. So in a workshop setting, how I would fix, how I would check this is I'd be removing the junction box electronics module and you would have access to this pin right here, pin 12. And then I would manually ground that with a jumper wire which would close this relay and then I should see power here going to this fuse. That checks the relay. Doesn't check the junction box electronics or the heater control panel. So, you know, I haven't seen a lot of heater control panels fail. So, because I was here, and I know that this circuit is good, the next thing I do would be to test fit a junction box electronics module, and then plug everything in, and before installing everything, obviously, see if it activates correctly. It should then, if it is an internal processor problem where it's not grounding, it should then, again, when it's turned on, supply power to the fuse. Now while you're at the dealer, you want to have them check to see if there's any K-CAN faults. You have K-CAN high and K-CAN low. If there are K-CAN faults, it could be that it can't talk to this module correctly. The K-CAN high and low is a communication line across multiple control units, and one component in that entire system can cause a communication problem. So they'd want to look to see if there's any other K-CAN faults, and then that would have to be addressed first. This is actually the connector that's going to be going for the rear defogger. So it's the one down the bottom on the, that's actually I believe the back side of the junction box right there. Let me go back one. And that's going to be where they would check pin 12. And that right there would be pin 12 inside this connector here, which would be feeding the junction box itself. So. Overall, it's a pretty simple circuit. Um, I would suspect that the dealer probably will take care of this for you, considering they were just in there um, and performed the recall. It could be that something got disturbed. It could be as simple as a poor connection, a wire that got pulled out, um, a poor connection at the junction box. It could be the junction box electronics, this component, the junction box itself, the internal relay, I doubt it's your heater control panel. So once they get it apart and uh, wiggle some wires and double check the pins, uh, I would imagine that they'll probably be able to get this fixed for you. I hope this helps, Kevin.